presentation. I would uh, really like to thank my colleagues at the University of Miami and the American Parkinson's Disease Association. Uh, we live in a before COVID and after COVID world. And in before times, I had uh, organized this program with the APDA for seven years in a row. And then we had something called the pandemic. But I'm really delighted to see my colleagues at University of Miami have continued the tradition because information is really important for uh, people with Parkinson's and their caregivers. I would be normally a little nervous about following such a phenomenal panel of speakers, uh, but I have to tell you, I'm actually quite excited because what I'm going to share with you, I have not been this excited about uh, medical or surgical research in Parkinson's since the time deep brain stimulation first came out around 20 years ago. And I hope you will agree when you see what I have to present. So all of these surgical treatments, uh, if you trace back the history, it goes back to this man you're seeing here, Irving Cooper. I uh, never had a chance to see him or meet him, but I did see many, many of his patients when I was at Columbia who were extremely grateful to Dr. Cooper for procedures he had done for their Parkinson's disease, essential tremor and dystonia. He was uh, author of a book uh, called Parkinsonism in 1970. And interestingly, the book was full of surgical treatments. Somewhere in the corner of the book, there was mention of levodopa as being a potential interesting treatment, but most of the book was devoted to surgical treatments. And he was one of the greats at that time in terms of neurosurgery. He was performing this procedure called um, pedunculotomy or cerebral pedunculotomy. And he had a moment where he accidentally ruptured a blood vessel and he was a good neurosurgeon right away. He ligated the blood vessel, tied it up so that there would be no further bleeding. And the next day he goes to his patient and says, you know, I'm sorry, but um, you know, the procedure didn't go so well. We had to ligate your blood vessel. And so unfortunately your tremor is not gonna be any better. And the patient says to him, look at my tremor, it's gone. And that, you know, he was smart enough to put two and two together. And he realized that the blood vessel that he had tied up is called the anterior choroidal artery. Now the anterior choroidal artery supplies an area of the brain called the globus pallidus. And Dr. Cooper said, hey, this was an accident. Why don't I do it intentionally? And so he started ligating anterior choroidal arteries which is much less invasive than really chopping off the cerebral peduncle, which is essentially leading to paralysis. And that's how the tremor is controlled. And he had a lot of success with this. There was one problem though, just like your fingerprints are different, your blood vessels in the brain are different. So some patients had good benefits, some patients had none, some patients had side effects. So he refined the procedure and he said, okay, I won't tie up the blood vessel, I'm going to put a probe down in the area of the globus pallidus. I'm going to freeze it. That was called cryopallidectomy. And that's what he started doing. He also used chemicals like phenol to again make a lesion in that area. Now the trouble with making lesions like this again is if you exceed the parameters of the lesion, there's an optic tract right next to the globus pallidus and you can lead to visual deficits and other complications. So that was the history of Irving Cooper, a pioneer, and by chance, he led us onto the way of surgical treatments for Parkinson's disease. This is Marlon DeLong. He was a chair of Department of Neurology at Emory University for many years, and he studied the role of basal ganglia in movement. He basically identified circuits in the brain called the direct and indirect pathways that are affected by low levels of dopamine in the brain. And he was one of the pioneers of a newer technique called radiofrequency pallidotomy, along with his colleague in neurology, Jerry Vitek, and the neurosurgeon at that time. Again, a great pioneer. I had occasion to work with him in Chicago, Dr. Roy Bacay. So these wonderful pioneers led us to a treatment option called pallidotomy. Now, one of the issues with pallidotomy, it is that when you make the lesion, you have to drill a burr hole, you have to put a probe in, you have to do brain mapping to identify the target. And once you're happy with the target, you make a lesion, but you make it very quickly, suddenly, the lesion is done. If you have good effects, 
wonderful, but if it exceeds beyond the parameters, you can have side effects. So that's the reason why we went to uh, deep brain stimulation as part of the surgical treatment, because we are wanting to address these abnormal electrical signaling pathways. Low levels of dopamine lead to imbalances in electrical pathways, we call the direct and indirect pathways. You would think low levels of dopamine lead to less activity in the brain, but it's actually the opposite. Low levels of dopamine lead to excessive activity in certain areas of the brain, particularly the subthalamic nucleus and the globus pallidus. And those are two of the targets that we have for deep brain stimulation surgery, for pallidotomy and, and other techniques, uh, and also for focused ultrasound. So the three main targets that we have to consider, one is the thalamus, uh, which is that green arrow, which is going to that large structure. When we map the brain for deep brain stimulation, for example, you're actually able to identify tremor cells in this area. And I have uh, videos I could present some other time where you can correlate the frequency of the tremor to the actual electrical signaling in the brain. So we know that's where it's coming from. The globus pallidus internal segment, on the other hand, is a target for more overall symptoms of Parkinson's disease. And the subthalamic nucleus also is a target for overall symptoms of Parkinson's disease. So these are the three main targets. And when we evaluate patients as surgical candidates, we have to choose which of these targets is going to be ideal based on their symptomatology and based on what their goals are with surgical treatment. Now, how can you reduce this overactive area of the brain, uh, bring it back closer to normal? I told you Irving Cooper's technique, cryopallidectomy, the new improved version was called uh, pallidotomy. But we have, as Dr. Luca just pointed out, a wonderful way of doing it in a reversible way, which is deep brain stimulation. One issue though with deep brain stimulation is there is a burr hole. There is brain mapping required that increases the risk of some bleeding in the brain. There is the need to put a pacemaker, connect the wires, potential for infection. What if you could reduce the overactivity in the brain without a single incision anywhere? not in the brain, not on the body. And that's the goal of focused ultrasound. So it's not an old concept as such. Originally, it was used to treat fibroids and prostate cancer. Subsequently, some people have used it to treat gliomas in the brain. But most recently, we have applied it to treat essential tremor and tremor-predominant Parkinson's disease. And incidentally, this has been FDA approved and is covered by Medicare in the state of Florida. We're also very actively involved with uh, research in this technology uh, for Parkinson's disease in particular. And I had the opportunity to meet with scientists from Israel. Uh, they, the company that is sponsoring us is Insight Tech out of Israel. And uh, truly, truly brilliant people who understand the concept of how brain is electricity and how we need to modify this in order to help people with Parkinson's disease. So the trial we participated in is called PD006, and we completed the trial and submitted the data, and this has led to uh, FDA approval of this procedure. So what is focused ultrasound? So when we were kids, we had a magnifying glass, and we took the sun's rays, and we put it on a leaf, and the leaf caught fire, because you're focusing energy onto a small point. Same idea with focused ultrasound, except, of course, a lot more complicated. We are taking ultrasound waves, and in fact, the patient's head, as you will see in the next slide, is in a helmet, and that helmet is basically a water bath because water con conducts sound waves. And so these sound waves are focused onto that target, and depending on what outcome we want, we can focus it on the thalamus. For example, in patients with essential tremor, we can focus it on the globus pallidus for patients with Parkinson's, so we have a choice. This is what it looks like during the procedure. That's the helmet that the patient is wearing over their head. They're in an MRI scanner. Notice the patient is not in an operating room. This is done in an MRI suite. So you're not going in with any incision or any other surgical procedure, but all of this is being performed inside an MRI suite. So the patient along with the helmet is put inside the MRI scanner. We're actually testing the patient because the, the way we make the lesion is very different from what I used to do 20 years ago with pallidotomy, 
where we would make a sudden lesion once we had done the brain mapping. This lesion is built up over time. So we make a small test lesion and see, is there any effect? Is there any side effect? We go a bit larger, we go a bit larger. So we're really increasing the safety parameters compared to the old fashioned pallidotomy, thalamotomy, because we are building up the lesion over time as opposed to suddenly making a lesion. So the patient is awake, they're being tested for uh, tremor, for rigidity, uh, depending on what their symptomatology is. This is the planning software that we're using. So we map the brain in 3D space Similar to what uh, Dr. Luca might do with uh, deep brain stimulation, it's basically a prior MRI, and that is fused with the actual software that we're using for focused ultrasound. And then the patient goes through what are called as sonications. So the patients will hear these sounds and uh, the ultrasound rays are being focused, and they might feel the heat also, because essentially it is heat that is making the lesion in the brain. At the end, we have a completed lesion. This is an MRI scan showing a thalamotomy. Uh, the completed ultrasound lesion is done. And this is what uh, ultimately is giving the patient uh, relief in terms of their symptomatology. So again, MRI-guided uh, focused ultrasound has now been FDA approved for Parkinson's disease tremor and essential tremor. It is FDA approved and Medicare covered in the state of Florida. It's incisionless. Uh, there's no pacemaker involved, no wire to be put in. It's a same day procedure. So patients go home the next day. There's no hospital stay uh, involved. Uh, there's immediate improvement that you will see. There's no programming involved. I, I do deep brain stimulation programming. Also, we have a lot of deep brain stimulation procedures going on at Delray Medical Center. But the advantage of focused ultrasound is it's a one and done kind of procedure. So we have started to offer it to patients not just in Florida, but across uh, the country, we have people coming in uh, from uh, various other states uh, to have this procedure performed. Now, uh, one of the talks earlier mentioned stem cells, and there's so much of fly-by-night kind of operators with stem cells. You have to remember, focused ultrasound is not that. This is a proper, well-studied procedure. Uh, it has been published in the New England Journal of Medicine. Dr. Elias, who's the lead author, is one of the preeminent neurosurgeons in this country. I see a name there, Dr. Lozano in the middle. He's humble enough to put himself in the middle of the author's list there. He is somebody that when I was starting out with pallidotomy, I would read his papers to study the technique as to how the brain mapping should be done and so on. So this is really an eminent group of neurologists and neurosurgeons who are researching the procedure and which is probably why it has led to uh, fairly quick FDA approvals. No surgical procedure is without risks. Uh, intraoperatively, when you're doing focused ultrasound, some patients may feel heat, some patients may feel pressure during the sonications. Patients might complain of vertigo or nausea. This usually resolves uh, soon after the procedure. There is a risk of brain bleed, about 1%, which is why we absolutely do not offer this to anybody who is on anticoagulants like Coumadin and so on. Postoperatively, about 5% of patients feel a sense of imbalance that usually resolves over time, and sometimes uh, we can offer physical therapy as a way of improving this. Let me tell you a bit about the PD006 trial, uh, again, sponsored by InsightTech. The target in the brain is just one side of the brain. So unilateral GPI is the target. And the patients we chose for this was those who had motor fluctuations. You heard about the roller coaster on our fluctuations and also patients with dyskinesias. This is still ongoing at the Palm Beach Neuroscience Institute. We are following these patients for five years but we've already gathered one year data, uh, data and submitted to the FDA. Uh, this is a list of uh, enrollment uh, by site that was provided to us by Insight Tech. And you can see on the green arrow, that is uh, the Palm Beach Neuroscience Institute. If you put together Stanford and Ohio State University together, for example, they add up to the number of procedures we have done right here in your neighborhood, 15 minutes from here. Also, I'd like to point out that we have gathered a lot of experience outside of the cl clinical trial since the FDA approval, especially with patients with essential tremor, but also some with tremor predominant Parkinson's. We now actively are recruiting for PD014 because PD006 was for one side of the brain. 
PD-014 is for both sides of the brain. And we already are recruiting. We hope to complete enrollment by June. We are going to do this in a staged bilateral way. So patients will have one side of the brain done first, and then we'll test them out. If everything is looking good, we'll go on a few months later to do the second side. The target in the brain, again, is slightly different. It's not the globus pallidus itself. It's an outflow track. It's called the pallidothalamic track. And we are looking at patients who have motor fluctuations. The roller coaster, Dr. Moore pointed out, uh, if you are having that sort of uh, response to your medications, this would be an option to consider if you're having dyskinesias, involuntary movements. If your tremor simply refuses to respond, no matter what medication you throw at it, this is an option. And again, the advantage over DBS would be it's incision-less. You don't need uh, to go to the operating room for this. Let's see. This is called plug and pray technology, I call it. All right. The video is yeah, playing here. Keep them both up for a minute and bring them in towards your chest like this. Yeah. Reach out, touch your nose back and forth. Yeah. Four or five times. And then the other side. Uh, reach out, touch your nose, beautiful. So you can right see a fair amount of tremor, hands. both sides of the brain. Now this gentleman underwent a left focused hands. ultrasound procedure to help the right side of his body. Right leg go up and down. This is before the surgery. I'm going to move it along a bit in the interest of time. And let's see if this video plays. This is post-operative. Straight up. Bring them in like this, pointing towards each other, both sides. And you can see the tremendous tremor Reach control on the right side. And all he had to do was a little shaving of the hair on, uh, on the left side of his head. But other than that, there was no incision or any uh, similar uh, technique involved. Right hand open and close. Right hand open and close. Just so right this is a gentleman who could not sign his name for something like 20 years. And he was just, he started to weep once he could put his Work signature right down on paper. Down. So it was remarkable to see the improvement. In your Again, we are one of the first uh, in, in the region to offer this procedure. Uh, we also do a lot of deep brain stimulation and you have to fit patients uh, to the procedure. Not everybody is a good DBS candidate. Not everybody is a focused ultrasound candidate. So we try to work with you based on your goals to choose what procedure will suit you best. So if you are considering focused ultrasound, Typically, I would say you've had to have Parkinson's for at least five years and Parkinson's meaning levodopa responsive. So you've had good response to medication initially, although now you're having motor fluctuations and, and so on, or you have tremor that is not well controlled uh, by the medications. That is certainly a consideration. Dyskinesia or even dystonia. We have had uh, remarkable success with patients who have a lot of cramping, tightness, toe curling, and that resolves with focused uh, ultrasound because it's addressing the globus pallidus. That's one of the better targets for dystonia and dyskinesia. And again, on-off fluctuations, if you're having significant on-off fluctuations, you would be a good candidate. It is contraindicated if you're on anticoagulants. Aspirin and Plavix is fine, but if you are on medications like Coumadin or Xarelto, uh, this is not a procedure for you. If you have a cardiac pacemaker, this is not a procedure for you. If you have had prior DBS surgery, we cannot offer you this procedure. Now, interestingly, if you had focused ultrasound before, we can offer you DBS later. So that is always a possibility. There are also certain technical measures we have to review. Uh, so for example, the skull thickness is very important because these sound waves have to penetrate the bone and reach the brain. So we do a measurement called the skull density ratio in terms of choosing the right candidates. Again, these uh, procedures uh, are state of the art. We're really changing the face of how Parkinson's disease will be practiced and it takes a team. Uh, that's our OR team at uh, Delray Medical Center. Uh, to your right, you will see the smiling face of Dr. Lloyd Zucker, who's my colleague in neurosurgery. We have done a bunch of DBS procedures together over the last uh, five, seven years. And now we are expanding with this new technique uh, of focused ultrasound. Uh, again, I'd like to thank the American Parkinson's Disease Association. I'd like to thank my colleagues at University of Miami for having me here. I have to say a special word of thanks for Judy, 
who, uh, with my prior experience of organizing these programs, I can tell you that fire alarm was the least of the glitches she has faced. So thank you so much for that. Uh, I think there will be time for questions later and there's other speakers uh, after me. So thank you so much for your attention. Thank you, Dr. Dalvi. Uh, we have one more speaker and then we're gonna take questions. So if you have other questions that have come up after 